Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay, so thanks for your questions. Uh, I send out the question asked for questions from all the peer mentors with a few other people involved in that. And that's probably been, uh, I would say maybe three months ago when we first started it. But a lot of things have changed and I've gotten 62 questions and I've got about five or six people that are interested in what I'm calling a committee. That is, okay, if I send these out, give me some feedback on it, work together. Um, and I found uh, some people that are very willing to do that. And I've divided it up into where it says back of camera, equipment beyond, landscape composition, all that kind of stuff. We had so many questions, I thought we got to categorize these. And I think the next step is not just to categorize them by the topic, but also categorize them by maybe how, I don't know how to exactly say this, how difficult they are. Because some of these questions that came up were pretty basic, while others were much more complex. Wait a second here. So having a variety of questions is a really good start. And we'll be happy to accept any future questions. If you've come up with a question, please send that to me. Um, so here's my, the approach as of right now. Take 20 minutes at the start of both TPC meetings and also peer mentor meetings. Classes, Lauren's Lightroom course that's on, I'll come back to this in a minute, on, on uh, March 2nd, and Michael's Ask the Experts, which is the 16th. How can the TPC and Peer Mentor Program create resources to answer those questions? But to be able to answer that, I need some information from all of you. Because um, I send, I probably should upgrade the number of emails I sent out, not number of emails, but number of people I send an email to, because uh, I've got like 45 people that I send an email to, but um, a dozen or more that I never hear from at all. Um, but I need to get some information for you about what would you like to have in terms of questions and answers. And if we were to put it on the, the Teton Photography Club website, not overnight, someplace down the line, would you use the Teton Photography Teton Photography Club website to answer those questions if the website had a variety of answers, articles that could help you, YouTube videos, even someone to answer your questions. Because I talked to someone today that said, oh, you could put my name down there. And if the person had a, had a question about this question, that he would be willing to answer them. So how many of you would, would think that you would be willing to do this and the way for me to find out would be by going to the chat room. All of, well, if you've ever been at the meeting before, you know that the chat room is where you vote. David is gonna collect the votes on this question. If you had a photo problem and you had heard from other people that the Teton Photography Club website had a good place to find answers to all kinds of questions that you might have and if we were able to make it easy to find your way through that, would you be willing to spend the time to go to the TPC website to try to find an answer? It's kind of a yes or a no, but we'd be glad to have your comments too. So go to the chat room. Tell me if you'll come or not. I don't feel like, oh, I don't wanna hurt Randy's feelings. So I won't say that I won't go. But if you won't go, that, that helps us understand whether it's worth the time to fix that, go. Send this to you, Randy, or no, no, no. Your... Send it to David. David.
Good dog. Can you guys see this now? Where it says Teton Photography Club at the top? Yes. Okay. Now, while you're figuring out whether you want to, whether you'd be willing to spend the time to go to get your answers or not, I want to share with something, something um, with you um, that one of our peer mentors put together with these 62 questions um, that he put together a question and answer for almost all of them. And this is not to say this is what it's going to look like. We're not going to, we're going to do it this way. But here's what we could offer something like this. Here's the question I know that auto exposure bracketing can be used as a setup for combining images that have been very different exposures. Um, oops. Uh, how do you set up my camera to prepare the continuing image? Can, continuing in, in images into a high dynamic range HDR image. What are the differences between Nikon, Canon, and Sony? Um, and Rick put this together and the answers. Here's the answers down at the bottom. But I want to show you that it's not a, here's the two sentence answer, but rather here's some place you can go. So I'm used to Nikon. So here I click on this. And what he set up is, Here's what Nikon tells you about how to do that. A lot of the questions that have been that, that we that we have in our 62 questions, um, Rick has found ways to put a video in there, to put a, a, a article in there, to answer the questions, to make it much simpler for people to be able to find out. My expectation is that a lot of amateur new amateur photographers have very little experience going online, going to YouTube, doing those kinds of things. For me, myself, over the last six months, I've learned to get into the habit of going there right away. And I want to create something that will help people to, to uh, acquire that kind of habit. And what, uh, Rick has done is answered this question well with, if you've got a Canon, you can go here. If you got an Nikon, you can go here. If you got a Sony, you can go here to try to answer all those questions and get people into the habit. So if you're in the chat room, think about what would be most helpful to you. Any questions about that? Okay, let's see. Oops, wait a second. Okay, I gotta go back to here. All right, so next, what's happening this March? I will always try to remember at the beginning of the semester to tell you what's gonna happen in the next semester. And I think we've got some really good things going on next semester, next semester, next month, sorry. So first thing is that in early in March, Oops, there we go. Uh, Lauren's going to be offering a class, new Lightroom Classic Adjustment Tools and Artificial Intelligence Masking. Tell us about it, Lauren. Yeah, just the one minute overview. Um, we haven't had a TPC Ed class now for almost two years. Uh, we've not tried to do one online. So this will be our first attempt at doing this online. Uh, Lou, who is on, is going to be helping me, uh, you know, get this all set up in the background, and it will be a, a true uh, TPC Ed class, that is, it has prerequisites, it has specific learning objectives, what you should know when you, when you finish the class, uh, there'll be a, a class evaluation form that will come out, uh, you know, that we'll ask you to do afterwards. Uh, and the best news is it's going to be free since this is an experiment. And we're also going to let twice as many people sign up as we normally do. Usually these classes are limited to 10 people. Uh, we're going to let 20 sign up. And as of this afternoon, we have 15 
who have signed up. So we have five positions still left. Uh, it will be a two hour class. It will start precisely at six. It will end precisely at eight o'clock. Uh, and you will get the course materials uh, in advance. Uh, registration for the class ends uh, the morning, uh, Tuesday morning, the first, uh, because I need a little bit of time to gather all the emails together and send everybody all the, the course materials and the PowerPoint slides and everything that we're going to use. So week from tonight. Any questions? Let me put my two cents worth into this. I used to go back in the day, three years ago, I used to go to these all the time. We did. We had them in the uh, real estate office and were on that big table. And they were really good because you could ask people questions. But this gets us started. So if, if you haven't gone and looked into the new uh, Lightroom Classic Adjustments, this would be a good place to go for you. Uh, well, and it, it will be recorded. Isn't that true? Because I just got an email that said, uh, um, the, the, the TPC and the peer mentor stuff has is, is now been recorded someplace. And I assume this will be recorded as well, Lauren? That's correct. And Lou is going to remind me, right, Lou? Don't let, don't let me not push the button. <laughs> Lauren, let me ask. Uh, I seem to remember in one of the communications about this, uh, the sign up or whatever, that uh, enrollment was limited to a certain number of people or whatever. Yes. We got to the point where it's filled up or? Uh, we have five slots still open. Okay. We got 15 of the 20 slots. Well, let me just make, make an offer. If you get to the point where it starts getting filled up and you have to turn people away, take you can take me off. I've done a lot of online looking at videos and whatever, and I feel pretty comfortable with, with the new masking tools. So I'd love to see your thing, but I can always see it online later on. So. Sure. Sure. Thanks, Rick. Okay. All right. Whoops. I want to find my other place to go. Okay. Here we go. Whoops. Hey, hey, Lauren. Just a quick question. Do you have yes. to you have to subscribe to Creative Cloud to get those tools? To Creative Cloud? No. They'll they'll all come by email to get the no. PowerPoint presentation and. Oh, if you want to use those tools on you know oh, in the class. Yes. yes. It's, it's the Lightroom Classic, but it, you do have to be a subscriber to have the access to the tools. Yeah, so if you have one of the older versions of Lightroom and you take the class, you'll be able to go home and you won't find those tools. But it may get you to go home to, to upgrade to the new one. I mean, the, the things you can do are pretty amazing, I think. Okay, any other questions? March 16th, so let's two and a half weeks from now, or is it three weeks from now, uh, we're going to have Ask the Experts. Notice I made sure that's a plural, experts. Uh, Michael, tell us about what's happening and uh, what we can do to get questions going. So this is a new and improved version of something that we tried last year. Um, we're gonna have a group of panelists available who have expertise in all the major camera systems, all the major post-processing systems, landscape photography, wildlife photography, street photography, um, black and white conversion, you name it, pick a topic. Uh, we'll have an expert um, that is prepared to answer questions. Um, shortly, we're gonna be soliciting questions from the members so that there'll be some pre-prepared questions. We'll also take questions from the audience it's going to be a highly produced, uh, very uh, easy to watch, fun and interesting Zoom program that will start at seven o'clock sharp on March 16th. And if you even want to just watch and learn and not participate, it will be it'll be a blast. So I hope uh, you and all of your friends come. It's a public meeting. It's uh, all of our TPC meetings are open to the public. So if you have friends who are dabbling in photography, this is a great meeting to bring them to. And this will be uh, recorded also, right, Michael? They all will be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, real quickly, Joyce had a question for Lauren about why is there a limit on the class? 
Uh, I, I just answered, uh, but the, the bottom line is we want to keep these things very, very interactive. Uh, I hope that absolutely everyone will be able to comment on every image. There'll be about 15 minutes of formal presentation to do definitions and, and show the tools, but all the rest of it's going to be live editing. I've got uh, 30 images that I hope to edit uh, with the group, and I want to hear feedback from everybody and have everybody involved. That's that's the big thing. That's what makes the, the classes uh, you know different, and that's why it's a little bit experimental to see how this is going to work. Uh, on Zoom, uh, you know, when we're all there and, you know, there are 10 people in the room and they've all got their laptop, it's very easy for one person to walk around and see what uh, what the questions are and make sure everybody's doing the right thing. It would be a little tricky, uh, but I'm afraid if we had too many people, uh, it would be just hard to get everybody's comments. That, and, okay, Lauren, Joyce? Yeah. and Lauren brings up a really good point. This is not a webinar. This is an interactive class. So limiting the number of people allows more people to be involved. Yeah. Okay. Um, the On the 23rd, that's a, a month from now, we'll have the peer mentor program. We don't know what the, what the top, what the theme will be. Um, but I wanted to also add that, that I got this just today on, on Facebook, that the TPC presentation recordings are working now. Um, David, can you tell us a little bit about how to get there and what's available and those kinds of things? Because, well, they, they've been working all along. They've been we've put everything on for the last year. So, okay. I basically I'm just reminding everybody that if you're a member and you sign in, you can go to the resources and then presentation area, and all of the. Uh, uh, monthly meetings and all the peer mentor meetings from the past year are there. So it's video of them or audio of them? No, it, if you click on the link, it will take you to YouTube and you can watch the entire meetings. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Yeah, and in the pre-Zoom days, uh, most of the PowerPoint presentations are there from people who gave uh, presentations live. So we, we've got as many resources as we can get on that page. Okay. Because I want to encourage people to use that. I, I must admit, I haven't gone there. Um, but that, I think that's really important that we take, make, make connections with those things. It'll help us get press questions. Okay, ready for tonight. The quick reminder, the challenging rules. I, I, I always mention this, but I wanted to thank all of you. Oh, I haven't had many problems with... Uh, with people sending me, me half an hour before the meeting. Thank you very much for making sure you get some to me before noon on the meeting day. And this time we've got 15 um, pictures, photographs uh, that I think are gonna give you some challenges because unlike some of the themes that we have, this one is kind of wide open as long as it's black and white. Okay. Voting on the peer on the black and white photo should reflect the theme, not necessarily your favorite photo, but what makes a good black and white photo? What did you learn from the articles? Um, I don't remember who it was that I was talking to about this. This sound, sounds like something that uh, Rick may have given me a little grief about. Uh, I'm being teacher now. I'm going to catch whether you've actually read the articles or not. Okay, what did you learn from from these articles. This is kind of what we're gonna, gonna try to encourage you to do uh, as we go through them. There are many suggestions about improving black and white photography. They were five cornerstones described by a number of our articles. What are the five tips? Um, I'm grading everybody from A to Z here. Tone, <laughs> shape, shadow, texture. I forgot the last one. Contrast, tone. Ah, thank you. Ah, so there are people that are actually making, covering for you that didn't actually read it. Here they are, contrast, and it suggests creating a smooth gradation, which avoids, this was a real educational one for me, avoids histogram cuts. Everything should have something. Tone, I really need to, to learn that. I didn't quite understand that one. Shadow, do the, does the, um, does the photo emphasize the shadow? 
Shapes draw attention and tends to be tied to contrast. Texture, that's someone that I really learned a lot about from. It's tied to light and shadow and also draws attention. What are the key cornerstones that you tried to integrate into your black and white photos? This is one of those that I have great prep, great uh, patience with. I don't Are understand you why you put question, question marks beside tone. I'm not sure exactly what tone is when you're looking for tone in it. That's why I didn't have, and I went back and read a couple articles a couple times and never really got a good answer. Which ones did you find to be important to really set up your black and white photos or that you'll use to make uh, decisions on the 15 ones that we have? Well, I used the software to increase the texture to make the water appear more detailed. Okay, good. So I, I tried for all of them, although I don't entirely agree with the, the notion of avoiding histogram cuts. I don't, I don't think that that is, um, I don't think that's a necessary area because there are some tones that, that you may want to intentionally leave out of your image in order to emphasize other tones. Okay. All right, and just kind of on tone. My understanding of that was, there's, there's really black and white, which is just black, white, and grays. And tone had to do with things like sepia and selenium. And so that's actually toning. Well, yeah, but that's what's, I mean, I guess I'm still kind of focused on why Randy put question marks by tone. I think, I think tone in a black and white refers to dynamic range. You've got 255 different versions of gray and only one version of black and one version of black. And, and the, use of, the use of tonality is the use of all of those 253 shades of gray. So tone or tonality is sort of a lay version of luminosity. We're really talking about luminosity, which is brightness. And that's the 256 uh, tonal range that you're, that you're talking about. So. Uh, and using it all, expanding the dynamic range. By everyone's used all the keywords I think that describe it. But I think that if you just substitute tone for luminosity, then you kind of get into you know better photography jargon. Let me see if I'm if I'm understanding this correctly. So a good tone would be from zero to two fifty three. It, it would be much more difficult to do, for example, on a on a serious overcast day. But if you have some a bright light from someplace and it's a, a, a number of levels of that light show in the scene that that's in increasing the tone. Is that correct? Sort of. I mean, I mean, yeah. if, if you have a typical bell shaped curve histogram, which is like shooting a gray piece of cardboard on an overcast day. And, and you have nothing in the top third and nothing in the bottom third, that's when you can use post-processing to stretch the dynamic range of that image. So the goal is when you look at a histogram, you're looking at 255 lines. And, and the goal is to have some amplitude in every single one of those lines. And if you don't, and it's, and it's your intention not to, there are post-processing techniques highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, tone curve management levels that can actually allow you to create amplitude in each of those 255 tones. Okay. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I think that does. But I, I'm realizing that I think what I had said before about the uh, overcast day, you're better off early in the morning, late in the day, when there is some sunshine, if you're doing it outside, but you could do it inside too. So you don't have to stick with that. I didn't participate in the, getting a, a, a photo together for tonight, but anyway, let me ask a question of those that seem to be a little more knowledgeable. Would you have 
more of a chance of, of having a, an impressive photo, everything else being equal. If you would start with a high contrast photo, such as a daylight midday photo, as opposed to the, the proverbial uh, you know, uh, cloudy situation. Um, I don't think so. I think it depends on what it is you're trying to achieve with your photograph. Okay. Okay. Not an answer. Did somebody say they had an answer? Okay, let's move along here. Um, so I want to, re want to review something that we've said before real quickly, that when you're looking at pictures, when when you're going to critique them, when you're gonna give informational feedback to photographers, there's a number of things to also consider in addition to those four. Composition, does the, does the photo have good composition? What's the exposure like? That's really important here. The clarity in pixels, I think we've done a pretty good job of explaining that in terms of number of pixels that people send to me. And the theme, let's use those, these composition exposure, but also think about contrast, tone, shadows, shapes, texture as we're taking a look at them. But I also want to give you some chance to think about the ones many of you, I think there's about six or eight of you, sent me a picture of that we, what I'm calling not so great or black, and in this case, black and white, that we can talk about to, to see as examples of that before we actually look at the 15 photos that we did. Okay. So for example, these are black and white photos, but I don't think they have much of this. Some of you will know who this is. It's a black and white of my dog. And this is a black and white. What makes these photos less than an excellent black and white photo? What are they missing? I think they're, I think they're both pretty good. <laughs> so do I, Randy. On the left is really good because he's really nice. <laughs> the dog photo. shows the one on the right. Sort of high key. Yeah. 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 I think the dog's missing a leg. The dog is missing a leg. But he's doing great, even with he's, without the leg, right? He's doing great. Yeah. What about the one on the white? On the on the white. On the <laughs> right. Have you nicknamed, nicknamed him tripod? Pardon? Have you nicknamed him tripod now? <laughs> oh no! Oh my God! Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? That's actually something that helped us get make the decision about Cody. Was that uh, there's a, a website called a Tripod for to understand how dogs work when they only have three legs, and it convinced us to keep Cody. Well, looks like clients got, was in that calendar. It looks like calendar. he's got a ball head too. Ball head. <laughs> Okay, any other comments about the one on the right? Was there something that you could do to make that better? Randy, what, what is so nice about that image on the right-hand side is you can see the texture in the snow. Oh yeah. And, and if, you were, if you were up at 256, or you were, in other words, you're at the high end, it, it's very easy to blow out snow. I found that And that's that why out. you have to be very careful with your exposure in order to bring in that texture. So I, 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 I go back to what, and agree with what others said. Both of these images, I think, are very acceptable black and white images, and I I, I like them both. I mean, I, I think you could probably crop a little bit of the bottom of the right hand image, but I think both images are terrific. And I think the one of the of the puppy is so regal and stoic. I just love it. In the process of learning learning this and how you adjust the the, the black and whites, I also found a way to to take Cody, the, almost the exact same picture. And instead of making the background white, I was able to take the exposure with the new Lightroom and make the background black and, and leave it the brown color to him. It was, I learned some things this week. Let's go to the second one. Second set. What do these photos have or miss? Both of these are black and white. Would you say is the best and why? Does contrast have an impact on it? What do you think? 
These are, and, and understand, you can say, oh boy, I, I wish I'd done this because these are pictures that people sent to me that they said, uh, not so great. I mean, I think they're composition issues. I don't think they're black and white conversion issues at all. Okay. What about the rest of you? All pictures are okay as black and white. Like the one on the right is very clear. The one on the left, not so much. I, I think the go ahead, uh, Randy. I think that the light on the subject is what's the problem with the one on the right. Her okay. face is not illuminated. It's uh, it's distracting with the light around her. So oh, okay, particularly with portraits, at least part of the face should have some light on it. Although mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be the whole face. Correct. Okay. Go to another pair. Here's two that <laughs> are very different. Which one do you prefer and why? All right, I'll put my hand up. Um, okay. <laughs> I prefer the one on the right because of the detail that the light shows on part of the buildings. The one on the left is just very boring. Okay. You do, you do carry the eye, if you notice from the track, it carries your eye to the black, but it's not balanced. I think we need to have less white and a little more black. Okay. If you're a cross-country skier, you might like that and imagine going through it, but it doesn't take you any place. But the light on the right-hand side takes you to a picture, I forget what it is, blue grass, something, and you, you're focused on that. Anybody else have any other differences, comparisons? On the right, I'd like to see more detail in the bottom half of the picture. So it's not perfectly black, but a little bit of gray, maybe the line on the street or something like that. That just seems kind of dark on the bottom. Yeah, because it's almost pure black. That, that's my image of Park City Main Street. And after I sent it, I looked at it and agonized over it a little bit and ended up cropping the right side and the bottom out a little bit. So the Egyptian, the theater was more on the right-hand side of the frame and huh. the center of the street was more in the middle. And it turned it, I mean, I liked it a lot better with that crop. So that, anyway, just, that's my yeah. opinion. And I think it's kind of too bad that it's got that, car right in front of on the right hand side um, it, that kind of takes away because that building with the lights on it is really interesting I think yeah with that crop that car the white car was gone and so oh, is really? that building, and so is the building on the right yeah and I, I liked it I liked it a lot better whoops sorry wait a second. okay let's look at the next one what about this one the pair that are very different I like them both. What do you like about them? I, on the left hand one, um, I think it has a lot of different, when we were talking about tonality, I like that one. Um, and on the right hand one, I just like the general drama of the sky and the details below it. Okay. In terms of just being black and white photographs, I know I was just talking in a way about composition, but um, they just intrigue me. 
it's kind of hard to put it in words. Because there's a lot of texture in the one on the left. And yep. I like the, sky, the, the sun right off the tree near the top. And that some of the trees have leaves on them. Lots of texture in that. The one on the left, that little piece in the snow kind of lead gets me leading into getting to the barn. Just notice the starburst on the one on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of the sun. Anything else, guys? So I'll, I'll weigh in very briefly. I think the one on the left, that, that big fat tree becomes the focal point, but it's also, I think the worst subject in the picture, I would completely crop it out, make it a vertical, and you'd have those long black lines with those beautiful white leaves, and it would be a very serene vertical composition. Hmm. So you would also cut out the sun? Yep. Yeah. I'd, I'd cut it right in half and just keep the left half. Hmm. I agree with you, Michael. I think the left half is beautiful with hmm. the details of the trees. The right one I really like compositionally because it leads my eye up through the barn and there's light through the barn. It's a fascinating picture. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Hey, what about this one? This was an image that was taken last year by someone who didn't submit a picture but sent me this and I thought it was a really good one to, I really like this. And I was wondering if you like it and why? If you don't like it, why too, as well? I'd probably go with a square crop on that. What would you <laughs> cut out, the sky or the- Yeah, next? just get yeah. rid of all the extra yeah. sky. Yeah. It's a very good animal behavior photograph. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, very much so. I kind of like the sky because it sets off the bird's, the, the daddy or the mommy's head. It, it just stands out so much. Yeah, I don't, I don't dislike the sky. I just think there's, there's too much of it. Too much, okay. And, and I guess my question would be, why a black and white on this? Well, that that Dave, this is mine. That that's is this is better in color. Um, but a lot of these pictures of the ospreys, they're basically black and white birds, right. and so a lot of times you can convert them. But this one, I should have sent the color version too, because the color version, the eyes in particular, are awesome in the color version. But uh, a lot of the ospreys, they're basically black and white and brown. So they do, they do convert fairly well. Tim, if you can recall the, the, the color version of this, do the eyes pop more in the color version than they do here in the black and white version? Oh yeah, the, uh, I assume it's the mother. The mother's eye is kind of bright yellow and the chick's eye is almost bright red. Okay. Um, and then the sky is actually a green, it's kind of a greenish pasture behind them. So, and it's actually got some nice light too. But uh, like I said, this was one I played with last year and kind of went back and forth on it. And Randy wanted an image that, that didn't work in black and white maybe as well. And this was one of them that I thought it would be good for discussion. Hmm. I just really like the way that that mommy's head stands out. It's like, whoa, it's like she's pissed. Don't mess with my baby. It just has kind of a message to me. Maybe other people don't. I think it's a great image. I just was wondering because with what it would look like in color. Okay. I think that's. Okay, so on to our black and white photos. For some of you, it's been a while since you've been here. I'm, well, I'm glad to have you back. Um, but here's what we're having today. There are 15 photographs. So everybody has five votes. The votes are sent in to David on the chat room. Send it 
only to David, not to everybody else. And uh, make sure you'll have a one, a two, a three, a four, all the way to 15. Make sure you put a comma between each one so we don't get one and two confused with 12. Um, and here's the way it's gonna work. We'll, we'll, I'll show you all 15 of these photos. I'll try to show it to you twice big. Um, write down who you, which five you'd vote for, then send it to David. And that'll be the first round. And the second round will be the top three, but it, with this many photos, it could be the top four, it could be the top five, but there'll be a second vote for the winner, the top one, two, three, whatever. But once we've done, once David had gives me the details on each of the um, 15 photos, then we're gonna critique every one of these photos. So everybody gets feedback. For those of you that haven't been here in a while, we didn't used to do that. But we talked with the, the peer mentors and I talked over this meeting and they really liked to have, whether they were the top photo or the bottom photo, they'd like to get some feedback. And what we're gonna to try to do tonight is give each one of these photos feedback. But we'll start with the, the photos that don't make the second round. And we'll probably have three, but we might have four or five photos in the second round. Uh, we'll get their crit critique later on. Okay, any questions about that? Okay. Let me go. Yeah, how do I do this? Oh, up here. Here. This. Now, hopefully. I don't need this. Okay, do you guys see all 15 of these photos, smaller ones? Hello? Uh, yes. Yes. So it's side to side. Candy used to tell, usually tells me if she can't see all of it. You can see them all? Um, yeah, but I think you can maximize your screen or maximize Lightroom okay. if that's helpful, however that works on a Mac. There you go. Yes. Yep. Okay, ready? Here we go. This is photo number one. And I'll give it to you twice. So just get an idea of five of them that you think are pretty good. Here's photo number two. Here's photo number three. Photo number four. Photo number five. Photo number six. Photo number seven. Photo number eight. Photo number nine. Photo number 10. Photo number 11. Photo number 12. Photo number 13. Photo number 14. Photo number 15. Okay, I'm gonna show them to you again. Is that all of them? Yeah. I'll show them to you again, but kind of get down. You might have 
five, six, seven of them, and then I'll show them to you again, and you can make it. And as you start to vote, please put a comma in between the numbers. Especially when we've got two digit numbers. Okay, I'm gonna get started all over again. And as soon as you've got your five, go ahead and send it to David. Here's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. So this is going to take us a little while because David's got to add these all up. You know, I've done this scalper two years with Zoom with all these pictures. And sometimes I kind of wished I had a chance to vote in him. I'm glad I dealt this time because they're so different. Wow. Lots of good pictures in this. Randy, I think you need to play a song like the the, the number one hit from <laughs> the, from this date in nineteen seventies, nineteen sixty five. Really, this is we have never had this many people that I can remember. Maybe have some music during the time that we that we wait in these quiet times, like when your answer when you're on. The line would help in something like that. Have music in the background. Just yeah, kidding. I have, to, Just I have kidding. to look that up. Just kidding. I probably could do that, but I don't know how to do that. I've discovered that there are companies that have terrible wait music, and they just want to wait for you to get off. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs>
Okay, you guys ready? We are ready. Okay, uh, here's your top three. Is it just three? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought maybe we would have some doubles, but go ahead. Um, three, four, and nine are your top three. Three, four, and nine. Wow. Three, four, and nine. Okay. Three, four, and nine. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and give give critique the ones that didn't make the next voting. So what do you think about this one? Randy, was that nine or 10 that you marked? Wait a second, let me look. Nine. It's David, three, four, and nine, correct? Yeah, that was what the voting was. Okay, because I'm not sure your numbers, once yeah. we go to the next round, it won't have those numbers again. Okay. Critique this one. What do you think? I got a hellhound on my trail. <laughs> Looks like a nightmare. I mean, it really looks like the, the drama of that. It, do, it does have drama with it for sure. Yeah, I, I liked it because it would only be good in black and white. And uh, it's very frightening and dramatic and uh, not sure what's going on, but the dog is definitely very focused on something. So I liked it. I don't like it. The dog's got one too many legs. <laughs> Sorry, Randy. That's okay. <laughs> My dog doesn't scare anybody. <laughs> this one, it reminds me of a wolf. It's like something out of a, a scary movie kind of a thing. It, it really generates a lot of emotion in me. I think this makes a great black and white too. I love all that Mr. Hayes behind it. And I like the fact that the dog is not um, sharp. It just um, oozes action to me, which is what's going on there. It isn't sharp except for around the head, which is the scary part. Yeah. You see <laughs> those teeth. See and those teeth. Canine tooth, yeah. And the and looks like a torn ear as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yeah, and it's it's almost got a halo around the, the head too which just yeah, accentuates the whole thing. On the edge? Yeah. yeah. And one of the things we do is, well, after we've critiqued it, if the person who took the picture would like to talk about it, they can, but you don't have to. Bernie, do you want me to talk about it? If you want to. So, yeah, sure. So, um, excuse me. So this is taken at the start of the uh, um, pedigree dog, dog race in downtown Jackson. And uh, um, and uh, you you're always uh, positioning yourself, trying to trying to find a, a decent shot that you haven't taken before. And uh, this is one that I that I uh, snapped off and then did a fairly severe crop on it uh, to uh, get this guy to kind of pop out by himself. And uh, all of, all of the backlighting is true backlighting. Um, and uh, yeah, that's. That's why there's so much energy and, and uh, you know, those dogs just go crazy at the start. They and, do. And this, this one was no exception. So what did you, say? you did a severe crop on it. Did you shoot it in landscape mode or portrait orientation? Do you recall? Um, geez, you know, I'd, I'd have to go back. I'm, I'm thinking that I shot, I shot a lot of things in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in portrait mode. Because I was uh, pulling in the the uh, uh, the dogs and the sled. Was it was it misty that that evening? Well, it, it was it was bitterly cold, if you remember, um, and so that's what was generating all the steam. And of course, you've got okay. all of these dogs that are just yelling and screaming and jumping up and down. And so this was really right at the very start, 
and you got this this eerie effect behind it, which I, I'll be honest with you, I really didn't see until until I got it in post. Hmm. Okay. If, on this photo in particular, you on the left hand side by the dog's shoulder. If you tuck out that little straight line, which I, that's the giveaway that it's the dog sled race. Yeah. yeah. You take that out and who knows, it's a wolf attack or someone, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about this one? Beautiful. Yep. Beautiful picture. To me, it's really luminous. Um, was looking at the snow on the Tetons. And you can see the light from uh, Driggs on the other side there. Yeah. Yeah, Randy, so, turn your lights off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have many on, but when we moved here, you could hardly see any lights there and it's changing dramatically. Yeah. All the people from Jackson are moving over and turning on lights. <laughs> I like the balance of this with the tree Trees on the right hand side and the, and the grand kind of on the left hand side with the balance. I, I can't tell on my screen whether the whether the stars are sharp or not. Um, and and it just may be a resolution, but I, I certainly like the capture of, of, of the, that portion of the Milky Way and you can see Andromeda, you can see a lot of you can see some constellations in this, at, 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 which I which I really like. Yeah, I was kind of assuming it was a little bit of a hazy or cloudy night, so it gives it all yeah, the stars. Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. There's like a cloud bank right along the base. This is what I was doing during the um, the dog sled race. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, what's this about? But Kathy, I'd rather be with you rather than at the dog sled race doing this. <laughs> Kathy, is that about twenty seconds? It is. Yeah. Sky is beautiful. Anything else? Well, it's it's Good not one. milky like in the summer, but it's right over the Tetons, so you can't beat it. Yeah, absolutely. And Kathy, is that light right over, just to the north of the Grand? There is is that from Briggs? You know, I I don't know. I would assume it is, but it also just could be. Um, I forget what they call that glow. Um, but yeah, it's probably Idaho. <laughs> Sorry. Is this Snake River yeah. Overlook? Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 Nice. Nice and cold. <laughs> it was. It was like minus whatever. I don't know. You guys were at the dog sled race. It was like minus 10 or something. Did you shoot that with your R5? I did. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, let's jump all the way over to here. I love this. Yeah. What I mean, do you love about it, David? Well, I just like textures and patterns, and uh, I don't have to have a subject unlike everybody else in the world. I just like looking at <laughs> textures and patterns. So I got hundreds of shots like this. I, I mean, I just, I, I love saying things. I think they're, it's, it's the little things nobody else notices. And I, I think it's a great shot. Looks like it was a photograph of ice on a lake or something like that, but it could be somebody's uh, freezer, I suppose. But because cracks in the ice reminds me of when I used to skate on a lake, the crack when it would get real cold. <laughs> Yeah, I like how sharp it is too. It's just absolutely sharp, tech sharp. It's Fremont Lake just outside of Pinedale. It froze um, clear this year. But that's yours, Penny? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I like it very much. It's nicely done. Thank you. It has blacks and whites and lots of <laughs> gradation in between and and follow all those cracks all over the place. Okay. Now that we've gone from the cold winter, <laughs> I hate 
baked out. It looks warm. No. <laughs> <laughs> it does look warm, that's for sure. I, I really love the sort of hyper contrast on this. And I like the two trees sticking out. I mean, if it was just the, those two, it wouldn't be the same. Although I wish it had a, whoops, sorry, wait a second. <laughs> that it doesn't have a foreground in it. That, but maybe that would take away from it, I'm not sure. Doesn't have a what, Randy? Foreground. That I, oh. I'm well, this is... tempted to wonder where those, how, where's the base of those trees? Yeah, this yeah. is um, the clouds in the sky. Um, shot with an iPhone. Wow. Actually, I don't mind missing a foreground because of those lower trees. And I took them out and put them back in. Well, I'm not so sure, actually, if you ran that all the way to the ground, it might not be, under the circumstances, actually distracting. Yeah. Well, there were a lot of buildings there that were, were very distracting. Oh, that then definitely no, I wouldn't want to have the buildings. There. I thought maybe it was on the beach. I'm with Sue. I really like the, the high contrast. And, and Lou, is that is the line from left to right? Is that from planes? No, that's the clouds in the sky. I mean, you know what just, I mean, what caught me was the uniqueness of I've never seen clouds like this before. They're wow. interesting. But below and below that line, the clouds look one way, and above the line, the clouds look different. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. just imagine what the wind was doing up there. Uh, where was this taken? In Palm Desert. Oh. oh. Huh. Well, if I was a pilot, I would not want to fly into that shear. <laughs> called a shear where the winds change directions. Not fun. Oh. Randy. 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 Did, you, Randy. Did, you, Lou, did you use a slower shutter speed or something to get some of the effect of the clouds or? I just used my iPhone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, and an old one at that. You could, you know, go really slow and pushing the button on the iPhone. Okay. Hey, Barney, you asked a question? Well, I was just going to make a comment since you since you asked about tone and tonality, and we talked a little bit about histogram. I, I think if you looked at the histogram on this image, just and I and I obviously I don't have a histogram on it, but uh, I, I think that you would see um, some very very dark sections show up predominantly in the in the histogram, which of course would be the which would be the palm trees, and. Um, what one thing that I would try to do in post is to bring some of that out, as uh, Michael had talked about, to bring out some more texture and um, context um, in in the um, in the really dark sections of the trees, especially the 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 two tall ones on the right hand side. I think that would um, that would add uh, a lot of punch to this image as well. They're clearly the darkest by far. Yeah. So you just yeah. light it up a little bit, huh? It if you can. Has, probably have some it, depth to it as well. To the yeah, if, and, and you, but you don't know whether the detail is there. I mean, that might be sitting at, you know, at, at for, you know, the, at zero, zero to 10 or zero to five. And, and at which case you're just going to, you're just going to uh, uh, enhance noise. Um, you're not going to really bring out any detail. And I tried to do that. I pulled it a little bit from the trunks of the trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see more detail, but I wasn't able to get it out of the, the branches. So one of the things that you can do, Lou, um, I'm not sure what model iPhone that is, but in the later models of iPhone, you have the option of shooting raw. And if you shoot raw, the iPhone images will post-process almost as good as something that comes out of a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Oh, wow. Yeah, this one doesn't have raw, so. I was trying to see if I could, Ugh. come on, drives me nuts when this does this. Okay, wait a second. So, 
Let's see if I can do this. So if we just pull the shadows up. Where's the shadow? Right here. And hit hit letter J on your keyboard. There you go. Yeah, there's nothing there really. You'd have to brush it. Oh, okay. And that would be a bit of a problem. Okay, I just wanted to see if I could just hit hit letter G on your keyboard, Randy. There okay. you go. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Next one. What do you think, guys? I think it has a great range of uh, from light to dark and got the detail in the snow. I like the shadows in it. It tells me what time of day. I would like this tree, these two trees, if they were lit, lit up just a little bit more. Because it's real, I can, can't see very much of the details in the trunk of those trees. I think it's very attractive, but I don't have a focal point. I'm trying uh -huh. to figure out where I am focusing my eye. And, uh, but I do love the range of color, range of tonality or depth, but I don't have a focal. I think it's a good point. And there aren't any steps in the snow. <laughs> okay. Interesting, we've got a couple of these that are similar in quite a ways. Got one dark swan in the background and then obviously the one that's fanning its wings in the in the lower right there's some action in it. If I had a choice, I would crop out the upper two swans and make this image here with the beautiful wing expansion from the trumpeter on the right, the focal point. I so agree. cut the top third or fourth as well, because you can't cut this just cutting off the left-hand side because you don't want to cut that one off. You mean make it can you guys see that? Oh, you could probably content aware fill them away if you wanted them to be gone. So, yeah. You know. I'm um, holding up a piece of paper so that it's a vertical. So right. it's the swan with the wing beat and then the one behind it swimming away from it. Mm -hmm. You could crop it to that. Yeah, crop it vertically with. Yeah. Um, this incredible view of the wings. The wings are everything in this one. Yeah. And, and I think the reeds on the right add a little bit to it too. It, it gives it something else. It's not just the birds. It's not just the water. I like that. But I also like the reflection of these other two birds. It's hard. That's true. The dark one in the background, though, that does, it grabs my eye, but it, but it doesn't, ooh, it's, oh, if that makes any sense. Okay, what was this? No, this is one we've got. What about this one? I'm going to kind of go a little bit faster because we're already past eight. I love Joshua trees, so I love it. I like the simplicity of it um, and also the tremendous depth in it. You've got that one great focal point in the front with that shadow. Yeah, um, I like the shadow too. That yeah. really adds to it. Yeah, and you're, to me, the eye is also just led off to the horizon on it. I think it's beautiful. 
Yeah, I've I, never been there. I didn't realize they're that close together. God, there's hundreds, if not thousands of them there. Yeah. But it does lead the, uh, you know, key subject, and then it leads off to the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Right. And that shadow is great. Yeah. yeah. I actually saw this today. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was snowing. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about some cropping? Where we're focusing more on the tall tree and its shadow, and then we have three or four of these Joshua trees leading off, leading our eye off to the distance. The one, the one problem I have with that is I think of this um, shadow and this shrub at the top of the shadow, I'd like to have that shadow completely there and then so you can't cut off a lot of it there. <laughs> True. And who shot that? Um, I think this little bush in the lower left-hand side makes cropping kind of a challenge. This That's part right here? Way of looking at it, at yeah. Least. yeah. Because it's for me, it's not the same photo without the shadow because it leads me uh, into looking at the big one okay any others sorry i'm going to pick up the pace a little bit here i think this one's great i love this one i do too i like all the different textures in it I love everything about it. Yeah. And I do too. I love this one. Yeah. yeah. And whoever did this, they did a great job on the, the, the focus from front to back. Yeah, this was, this was taken with a super wide angle lens. I think it's a 18 millimeter or something like that. Um, this is at the, um, Fox Creek Canyon up at the top where I'm not allowed to walk over here. <laughs> but I like the texture in it most of all. Yes. Good shot. Okay. Since it's you, Randy, I can oh okay, you got back. <laughs> Go back to your picture. Okay. The what's fascinating is the dominance of the snow in the front. You know, I think it's a fabulous picture, but I would make the snow a little less dominant in front. Maybe I'm sorry, a little what more? Less dominant, less intense, because it's taking over a lot of the detail in the back. So oh. I don't know if you walked a little bit farther to the left and stood in the water, but then you would have, um, you know, more uh, a focal point and more eye carrying as opposed to the snow. Anyway. What, what I thought of this was that this was kind of a, uh, like an arrow pointing farther down. Um, okay, because it does point you, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and the water the there was only about a foot deep. So that was easy because I had my hiking boots out. I think the only, oh, right. the only thing this picture is Randy you see that white tree in the top corner oh up here nope to the left this one, that yeah. one. I would I would cover that with more branches ah uh, okay interesting that you saw that dark in it it's a bit distracting yeah. Yeah, just a little bit I think this picture is fantastic yeah hey, Randy did Ray, you Randy off? after you Go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask if you cropped off any of the bottom. No, um, I had a tripod in it, and the, I was right up close to it. So there's nothing, I guess, to Erica's okay. point, you, you couldn't show a little bit more moving the snowfield back just a hair. Uh, no, because right behind me was a drop off of the water of about three feet. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. And I then. And I was almost stepped back and I would have been over my head in water probably. 
And the water's R pretty cold. <laughs> Randy, after you finish this shot, I wish you had taken two dark rocks and put it in, put them up in front because it looked to me this looks like a white seal laying on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> put some eyes in it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then yeah. Totally. Oh, a couple of branches for whiskers. And yeah. you can move, you can move on. You can move on. We're the abominable <laughs> snowman. I, I would have felt that was sinful to change because th th this 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 snow here is really beautiful. I mean, from different angles and stuff. I was just trying because if you look right up here, this is a mountain in the way in the background. Yeah, okay. no, you have to do it in Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> okay, swans. Another swan picture. The clarity. Well, I, 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 I like this. I, I mean, I, I like this. The, 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 thing that, the thing that bothers me about it is, is that we've got a group of four. Yeah. And, and so, that, so it feels, un, in that sense, it feels a little bit unbalanced. And, and more importantly, there's overlap between the swan on the right and the, and the second one in. And sometimes you just can't help but the, the, the best swan pictures I've seen uh, always go for separation. I do think there's beautiful contrast in it though. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. I think, I think the post-processing here is excellent. The conversion's terrific, really. I really like the water. The texture in that water is, it it's, has lots of texture in the front and then in the back, it's smooth. I think that's cool. It, it's unfortunate that the swan on the far left, his head is in the snow. <laughs> if, if, if you could crop that snow out. You could take that whole swan right out. Ooh, yeah. Oh, no, I like that swan. <laughs> He's the only one seeing what's coming. <laughs> hey, guys, wait. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Randy, I, one one other small point on that last image. If you go okay. back, if you look on the in the upper right hand corner, you see that uh, that reed coming down. Yeah, yeah. That looks like a hair. Of course, it's not. But that's one of the things I think we have to look at and and make sure that we clone out. Just right that one yeah. right there. Yeah. Right. Okay. You can also tell that the processor did some darkening of that snow because you can see behind those reeds where the darkening didn't take. Oh, here, yeah. yeah. And that's something that Start Lauren can probably teach us next week. Who, who took that picture, by the way? This one is Erica. I did it with my iPhone. And oh, the problem cool. was, I was standing there, this pond is very small and these swans usually are not in this pond, but I, I had the picture with all of them in a row facing the same way, probably was more balanced, but their heads were into the snow. So the contrast oh, was a problem, yeah. but, the, stop at the market. but the winds were blowing, it was cold. Yeah. And so I think that's, that's it. That caused the ripples in the in the pond. So the ripples are and really I, interesting. And I, and I was really lucky because I was standing there for quite a while, and the sun finally broke through, and that made it more interesting. So, Thank folks, you. if if, uh, if you're having a background yeah. conversation, <laughs> please. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll, okay. We've got some people who are talking in the background. And please mute. All right, I gotta say, I would put this on my office wall and and get a giggle every day. This is <laughs> I love this one. So cute. Great. Love them. Them. The texture is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. The texture really is. Yes. Beautiful eyes. Yeah. Super sharp. I can't believe this yeah. wasn't the finalists. I think this is fantastic. Yeah. Whose is it? Charlotte's. Oh, it's very <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it, it just makes you smile. Uh -huh. What is Charlotte? Are you there? I don't think she's on. She wasn't. She wasn't one. 
Oh, maybe not. No, I, 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 wrote I don't remember seeing her. The one thing I would have gotten mm -hmm. was to step back six inches so she would have gotten the ear on the left hand side. Yeah. And yeah. It. <laughs> but the know. texture. I don't, I don't really, that doesn't really bother me. But if you look at this beautiful detail around the chin, you can yeah, see the hairs around the chin. Right. I just think that I'm, I'm, if you're just even six inches back, so the left ear was in fact included, I think it'd be a more balanced picture. Yeah. But it sure is cute. I, I don't know what kind <laughs> of an animal it is, actually. Oh, a goat. goat. <laughs> like a special kind of goat? I've never nope. seen one that look like a that. Black and white goat. <laughs> a black and white goat. <laughs> Says the veterinarians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me, hey, Lewis and Candy, is it a? <laughs> for me, what unfortunately draws my eye is that the uh, the, the eye on the left hand side of the of the animal. It's not anywhere near as clear as the one on the left hand side. Right. It, it's it distracts me. My, my eyes always want to go in that direction when viewing this photo. And that ear on the right hand side in the towards the back is a little yeah. out of focus too. Yeah, that, that doesn't yeah. bother me too. Much. I think there's a depth of field problem on that photo. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so I don't keep you here all night. We haven't voted the second time, so we're down to the last two. What do you think of this one? This is very commercial looking. It's good. It's very, it's like an editorial shot. And you can ride on, walk into this little creek all the way down to the cow farm. Uh -huh. And what was, I mean, well, let's comment on the photo before I ask where it was taken. So. And it's got a shadow on the hillside there. Surprisingly, it doesn't have that much snow on the hillside there <clears throat> in China. <laughs> this has a lot going for it. And I like the way the, the dark of that stream leads your eye then to the white of the barn. Mm -hmm. I'm having a little problem with the angle of the mountain and the image of the barn. I just feel like maybe it's just my eye, but and I do see the creek, but I feel like it needs to be lifted okay. somehow on the right hand side of the image. That's probably just my eyes. So. I, I know so. I think this this is one of those that start. when you start editing it, it's like, well, how much do you tip it? But this this mountain mm -hmm. makes it awkward and the the barn is not on the flat. Uh, oh, but the green silos are vertical and they have to be vertical. Correct. Ah, oh, yeah. The the uh, silos, yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah. You can't you can't have the silos being leaning in. Oh. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I would do another crop. Cool. Any other questions, comments? What, yeah, where was it? Arnie, where did you take this? Is Arnie there? Did you leave? No, I'm here. Uh -oh. uh, it's in Park City. I just said it's in Park City. I, I saw that on the way into this Park City myself. It's a beautiful yeah, location. Yeah. It's called the McPolin Barn, I think. I knew I'd seen that, but I couldn't place it. That was driving me nuts. So yeah. yeah. And the barn is a little bit bigger than the house. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's where that's where they make their money is in the bar, not the house. Right. So, yeah. Right. yeah. The wife must not have been very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Last of our second play or fourth place. There's something kind of hypnotic about this. Yes. Love that. Lots of texture, particularly on the piece on the right. Real detail. And on the on the lower um, on the lower curve, why it all of a sudden goes from sharp to completely out of focus. 
That's weird. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, what's going on there? It's weird. Well, I think it's because the, the the piece on the right is actually in the foreground and it is slightly out of focus. Even the top of the whatever the, where the pollen is supposed to be. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it could be the way the light is hitting the object, and it's stunning. I liked it very much. It's possibly that the way the light was focused and it hits the stamens on the back four and didn't hit the front one in the same way. I think it's just got a very narrow depth of field, and those four in the middle and that part are where the depth of field is. But. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's focus stacked, so that's probably partly why that um, uh, goes out there too. But yeah, it's pretty. And that white, the front one is an inch away or so out of uh, in front of the others. That explains it, Lewis. Thank you. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> but yeah. it's stunning. I mean, I really like it. Yeah, it's Thanks. gorgeous. I went out of my element. I'm taking a. Uh, online uh, lighting class, lighting lighting for close subjects, I think is what it's called. Oh, okay. so I played around with this. It's really cool in color, but I really like it. I, I took it with the intention of making it black and white from the get-go, but it's pretty cool in color. So Lewis, what if you took um, a brush and you just made the transition on that lower curve from sharpness to unsharpness a little bit more gradual, just so it wasn't so abrupt? Yeah, yeah, I could probably try that. Yeah. Hmm. You'd also have to deal with the, the pedal on the left. Yeah, but it's not as bad. It's not as pronounced. No, it's, it isn't. It isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, actually, Lewis, what is it? <laughs> what is it? It's, uh, oh gosh, an amaryllis. <laughs> Candy got this for Christmas and the thing just like went crazy. <laughs> Um, ama amazing how fast it grew so we had these beautiful red flowers which are kind of losing it now not kind of they are losing it so, oh, so we had a couple days are, where this was looking really good those are actually flowers they're not just going to become flowers no that's the stain yeah part. that's the stain yeah these that not the flower itself the the big part on the left there is the um flower petal oh okay. have three images right yeah yeah. Lewis, could you talk a little bit about the uh, take in? You mentioned it was focus stack. Uh, number one, how, how close were you? How, was your lens, the front of your lens to the, the uh, one on the right? I would, this is as close as I could get. Okay. And then, it's a, yeah, the so it's close to. Is, in what kind of increment did you have your camera take photos and how many photos were in the focus? Um, so I'm, I really have just started playing with focus shifting. So I, this is in an icon and I, it's as low as it can go. It's number one as far as the increment. And this one is a hundred images. hundred images. Wow. Okay. And so is that a macro lens that you use? Yeah. Yeah. 105 millimeter macro lens. Ah, oh, okay. Lewis, are you using the Helicon to, uh, I did, yeah. 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 That does an amazing job. It's cool. <laughs> it's really cool. Hmm. Okay. So All right, guys, here. we're going to have to go down here, put the filter on rated. Wait a minute. One, this is not, wait a minute. This is not a one. That, that's them, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, here we go. go rid of this. Now you only have a one boat. And I'll go show these to you big and be a little quicker than we were on the last one to your vote. Here's number one. Here's number two. Here's number three. I'll show them to you again in a minute. Oops. If you've got your pick, go ahead and send it. I'll give you one more round of. This 
is number two. This is number three. Notice that it's not the same number. The actual number up here has changed. This is one, this is two, this is three. Okay, while David is adding them up, let's critique this one. Let's go through these three. What do you think about the first one? I love their eyes. <laughs> yeah. Great angle. They're coming right at you. They're in your living room. <laughs> yeah, and you, I just like how the you go from the dog's eyes right to the, the musher's eyes, and it's, a, it's just a great set of eyeballs. Also oh, focus lens. coming right at you. Lens was this? I, I love how similar the musher's expression is to the dogs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're all having fun. How, how long of a lens was this shot at? I don't know. And the person who, sh oh, I could take a look at it, I suppose. Let's see. Hit letter D. Then hit letter I. One more time. 24 to 105. Wow. Got it 58. Close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really fast. <laughs> she better get out of the way because. <laughs> the photographer's not here tonight because they got run over. <laughs> I also like the, the snow. It, it's got so much action in it yeah. all around them. And I've been to these a number of times. And I just and I love dogs, and th there's so much energy in this picture. Wow, tongue sticking out, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Even their paws, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one on the right, far right hand side. Yeah, the moon tags too. Yeah, it's a spectacular shot. Plus, if if you need something that says there's focus in life. Those dogs have focus, you know. They, they do. Yeah. They, they are. <laughs> I know what I'm here for. <laughs> Singular purpose. <laughs> and you could have, when they're coming out of the woods, hmm, I wonder where this was taken. This is the pedigree one. I, I've been to a number of times. It's, it's who, really who took Who took the picture? Who took the picture? Yeah. Um, Becky? And I thought she was here a while ago. Becky, are you still here? I don't think I so. I am. Can oh, you hear she me? is. It, don't yeah. get in an accident, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not driving. It's just that it's um, we were on this very windy road without cell service, and we kept going in and out. So sorry about that. Well, no. Tell us about your photo. Um, this was taken at the um, coming into the finish line over in Driggs. Um, it was the, the last um, leg of the race, and um, I was lying down on the snow and uh, just shot him coming at me. You're lucky you didn't turn into pedigree food. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a sled track across your back now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You no, know, just a couple of paw prints. <laughs> I can't stop watching the eyes of those two front guys. I know it's crazy. They are like bzz, like a laser, and you looking at you, amazing, amazing. Yeah, the combination of the eyes and the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. favorite was the tongue hanging out. Yeah, yeah. and the one on the and the kind of middle there. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like the black sheep on the left here. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the second one. What do you think about this one? So David, you could have sold this at Mountain Trails Gallery for 20 grand. <laughs> well, you know, I, I may make a run at that on, with the guy who owns the place. <laughs> I, I love the detail on this. This is a nice, sharp, sharp, sharp shot. Yeah. yeah. That's just gorgeous. Yeah, the lighting is beautiful. The staging is beautiful. This is a great, great yeah. photo. Yeah. 
I just was noticed the reflection at, in the front. That's kind of cool too. Yeah, yeah, I like the reflection in the front. Was it just no. on a piece of glass or is, what, is no. that on a mirror? No. Actually, I, I shot it on the dining room table. Okay. I uh, waited for an overcast day, but then on the I I had to rummage through my wife's closet to find a black <laughs> blouse, and I hung a black blouse behind it. Yeah. And then I put a piece of tin foil on the left to kind of light up the uh, left side. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I did. It, it is a focus stack of about four images, maybe five. Wow. So, so, were you a writer? I mean, those are show spurs. I love Actually, the those are my dad's spurs that his cousin wow. made. And he also made, uh, Adolf made the belt buckle. Um, oh, it's, 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 all, yeah. it's all hand hammered out of gold. And, uh, gold? Well, the, the buckle. Yeah. The, the, spurs, the spurs are actually made out of a Model T Ford axle. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, I, I would have, I actually have a better shot, but they have my dad's name on them from the other side. And that was, I didn't want to <laughs> uh, have that side showing, I guess. So I would love to see a print of this. I bet it would be gorgeous. It's yeah, just you know, stunning. Uh, yeah. I agree. One of the things I about have a I, I have a paper for that that would look amazing. <laughs> well, just saying. <laughs> CJ, I, I'm actually going to print the other one with my dad's name on it for all of my nephews. So I'll be uh, calling you. <laughs> okay. Well, I know just the paper. Okay. Because um, you probably anyway. want to have something with high silver content, but it just has every single tonality oh. that you want in a black and white print. The detail, and, and, the tones, it's lovely. I really thought it was beautiful. It really okay. is. Of all yeah. the 18, 15 photos, the one for me, the one that has is the best demonstration of tone is yeah. this. Yeah. Because the, the, the uh, leather belt, you can see all the details of it. And then the light on it, it re reflects it out. It, it makes it real to me, to me at least. If, if I put on my very, 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 very picky hat, the only pickiness I would have is, otherwise it's absolutely wonderful, is over the right where it kind of drops off on the light. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. but but there's a space on the left-hand side, side, but there's not a space on the right-hand side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I may ask, what you, what you do post-processing-wise as far as this goes? Did you use um, any extra tools or straightly in Lightroom? or? You know, I did put it in silver effects. Uh, okay. But mainly there was <laughs> what I used it for was to eliminate, there were some bright spots in the background because uh, amazingly, even though I, I kept trying to spread out my wife's blouse <laughs> <laughs> and I, the weirdest little reflections would come through. And so I, I had to spend quite a bit of time taking out a couple of little bright spots that I didn't think were there at all until after I'd taken the photos. And um, yeah, so mostly I, I didn't do a lot in silver effects other than try to eliminate some bright places that just like needed reflection. to go. Well, no, they're in the background where I had, like I said, I had this expensive backdrop. It's my wife's blouse, so um, which I had on a hanger sitting on a little tripod. But <laughs> it's amazing what little things show up that you don't notice until you take the photo and uh so yeah, but that, I, I, I do have to just say one thing, which has nothing to do with the picture. The guy that made these spurs and this buckle, uh, he basically, I mean, every one of those little marks is done with a tool and a hammer. Yes. Wow. And, yeah. Just an absolutely <laughs> wonderful photo, David. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. But, but he lived down the road from us. He was my dad's cousin. And uh, I don't think he ever sold a pair of spurs for more than 50 bucks. Wow. Yeah, and that's all one piece. He he hand hammered everything out of a Ford axle. Wow. That's and then, then you know he laid the other stuff on top of it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, so they're kind of a uh, well it, uh, uh he didn't get his due in life, like that's all I gotta say. <laughs> 
He was well known to a lot of cowboys, but not many other people. So, yeah. okay, here's the last one. This speaks to me of being mysterious. It's almost like it just has this air of mystery, especially in the middle and the back. Like you almost don't know what peaks are behind there. Yeah, I, I love the, uh, the mist and... That's, that mist will always remind me of this, um, this winter. It was like every day we had that mist, fog kind of stuff. Yeah, it's just another, yeah, just a great black and white shot. You could hang this on a wall and look at it for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. I like the way the lines, the black lines from the trees runs to the center, kind of takes my eye to the center and then to the back and that, to the that, mountains on the right, the, the mountain on the right. Who took the shot? Sue. Ah, Sue. And where was this taken from, Sue? Uh, south end of Spring Gulch. So, you know, as you're going out 22 toward Wilson, and then you turn north, just as the road is kind of curving and you go up mm -hmm. Spring Gulch, it's in that area. Oh, really? Boy, I wouldn't guess that. How long of a telephoto was it? What was it on this one? I can't remember. Uh, 200 millimeters. Looks like 200 millimeters, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow, that's a, it's a gorgeous shot. Isn't that interesting? The three finalists are all great black and white, but they are completely different in what it's taking a picture of. Landscape, the middle one, what would you call that? Still alive. Pardon? Yeah. Still alive. I oh. call it still life. Still life. And then wildlife that guy is wildlife <laughs> <laughs> all, right. Shot. all right david give us first state place second place third place which third place third place was number three okay second place was number one yeah ah. <laughs> and first place was number two Congratulations. Nice going. These yeah. are these are three Excellent. really different but really good black and white photographs. I think yeah. we should put these in the uh, uh, Snapchat and the uh, Facebook. <laughs> I'll have these in by tomorrow. Um, well done, you guys. Yeah, yeah like everything yes. was great. We had a lot of good Super shots. Cool. We did a lot of good shots. No may, I make a, may I make a comment slash observation? Sure. I think we're getting pretty good at, at, at these commenting on these things and the broad number of people that are commenting. It's it's impressive. We're, we're, we're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Yep. No, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Um, I am looking forward to once COVID is over, not completely because of the peer mentor program, but it has a lot to do with it. Um, but I think we've come a long way in terms of critique and getting together and the pictures that we have uh, presented. Nice job, guys, really nice job. Okay, any other comments? David, send me the chats for both the previous one and this one. Uh, and enjoy the nice warm weather. Well, maybe yeah. not. Well, David, what's the theme for next month? Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I got to pick that out. I want to.
quit. I need to put this up. <laughs> so true. <laughs> oh gosh, what have we not done? You haven't picked out the theme for next month. No, but we, which ones have we not? It's oh, there's only two. Uh, not uh, the red ones. <laughs> oh, so the greens, the greens are still available, right? Right. Do you guys uh, see it all, or uh, mostly? There we go. There we go. The greens are all okay. The black and white and panorama are not okay. You just need to pick any one of these. Well, there's 32. Oh, okay. This this is for for Penny and I. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> We're gonna do abstracts. Yes. <laughs> oh wow, Abs I don't think abstracts have ever been used before. Not that oh, I can cool. think of. So you you know, David, what that means? It's abstract. Doesn't mean anything. Article. <laughs> it does. Well, it doesn't mean anything to us quite yet. But whether you're going on a honeymoon or not, abstract is articles you've got to send me right away. <laughs> oh. All right. Oops. Oops. Awesome. Well, thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you thank you thanks randy great shots everyone you're welcome this was fun night a little late but it's still a fun night <laughs> okay let's make this